According to the Bible, it rained until the world was covered in water. Such a catastrophe should have left evidence all over the planet in the form of uniform marine sediments spread across the earth and the ocean floor. But is there any proof of a devastating global flood? scientific quest for traces of the biblical global flood that Noah, his family, and the animals in the ark survived actually began more than 150 years ago. But geologist Ian Plymer, after searching across continents, sometimes in the most extreme weather conditions, has found very little evidence. A great flood would leave a signature. It would be a very, very large signature apparent all over the world. There is no such signature. There is no evidence. In fact, there is only overwhelming evidence to the contrary. The absence of direct evidence is only one of the problems with the story. In fact, the whole idea of a global flood flies in the face of what is known about planet Earth. To flood the entire planet to the top of the Himalayas would take five times the volume of water in the oceans. It's hard to imagine where such a deluge could come from. The Bible provides some clues. It says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But even non-stop, that's not enough. We know of how much water we've got in the oceans. We know how much water is in the polar ice caps. We know how much water is in the atmosphere, and we know how much water is in the rocks. If we put all of that together, which has happened many times in the geological past, we still do not flood the continents. If rainfall couldn't deliver enough water, what could? The Bible offers one more possibility. Deep springs. The book of Genesis says, all the springs of the great deep broke through. Could the great flood have gushed out of the center of the earth? It's an impossibility to have that much amount of water coming out from springs, fountains, or geysers. If all of that water was in the earth and in the crust, then well before it had been released as geysers, the crust would have been quicksand. You couldn't have walked. Even if the flood had been caused by a miracle, Noah, his family, and the animals would have had further problems. The amount of water it takes to flood the planet would have changed the Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere would have had a huge amount of water vapour dissolved in it. So much so that you would have drowned by breathing, and so much so that atmospheric pressure would have crushed your lungs. Geysers present another potentially fatal problem. Geysers pump out huge amounts of noxious, sulphur-rich gases. Even before the flood, you could not have breathed. Nothing on Earth could cause the flood. How about something from space? Comets contain vast amounts of frozen water. But to flood the entire planet, the comet would have to be 1,000 miles wide, or as big as Brazil. If a comet that size hit the Earth, not many people would live to worry about a flood. Comets carry water, they are dirty ice. As they come into the atmosphere, they explode. There are massive shock waves. Massive areas of forest wiped out. Huge extinctions of life from a comet. 
This devastating impact would force the temperature of the atmosphere to rise to 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Hotter than the surface of the sun. We would have had no life to go into an arc. End of story? Not quite. According to the Bible, Noah's Ark landed in the mountains of Ararat, today in eastern Turkey. The earth was revealed at last, and the animals disembarked after months below decks to repopulate the world. So, are there any remains of the Ark? The problem is that the evidence, wood, rots in a matter of centuries. Countless expeditions have been drawn to Mount Ararat seeking to discover the Ark's resting place. There are no obvious remains of it on the slopes of Mount Ararat. This hasn't stopped a thriving tourist industry. Pilgrims, Ark hunters, and locals convinced that they will find the remains of the Ark somewhere on the mountain. One French expedition in the 50s did in fact find an ancient looking piece of wood 12,000 feet up in a glacier. As a geologist, Ian Plymer wanted to find out more. He knew that for the wood to be part of Noah's Ark, it would need to be dated to around 3000 BC. When this piece of wood was found, it was thought to be the clue. This is what we need to show we have Noah's Ark. And so they took the wood to date it. And you can date wood by measuring tree rings or by carbon dating. It wasn't old enough. The wood was from the 8th century, 4,000 years after Noah's time. But just as Ararat was looking like a false trail for Ark hunters, this ancient mountain came up with a new twist. In 1949, U.S. Air Force planes photographed